Welcome to the Quick Stop Formula One podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me today, as always, as, always, as ever, is Tandy. As always. How, as always, co-host and co-founder. I forgot Gosh, that part. She's so pesky. Uh, wanna, she's always here. I want to make Wait sure the people know. I want to make sure the people know. It's a joint thing. <laughs> Not just me. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm all right. You know, it's, um, what time is it? It's, it's half 10 in the evening. here. Yeah. Wait, wait half 10? What, what time are you on? Half, sorry, as you can tell, it's a Monday and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, we're, we're recording a day late, um, but we've, we've got a special guest. So, you know, Ooh. you know, that's, that's fine. You know, they, we want to keep people let everyone get their their thing out of the way and then we'll yeah. come through with our thing. So very, very, very proud to say we've got a super cool guest on the show. So this guy, I don't know what awards you've got, Tandy. I've got a couple of awards. I've I won mean, a couple of things in my lifetime. Uh, this guy has got Emmys. Uh-huh. This guy has an Oscar award. Even me saying that is crazy. So we had. We, we're here with none other than Trayvon Free. How is it going, bro? Here's a round of applause for you, man. That is oh, man. crazy. Thank you, Thank you for coming through. Such a I, pleasure I think, to be here. No, man, it's it's so cool to have you here. Um, so like for those of you, for those of you, for those of people at home who who may not be familiar with you, like you know, obviously we've got a largely British audience, and um. Who who are you and, and and yeah and what do you do? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, my you may know me from uh, writing for the Daily Show with John Stewart, uh, Daily Show with oh. Trevor Noah. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Talk your shit. <laughs> Jeez, reloading. Jesus, uh, sorry. Little, I don't, uh, sorry. Little show called Black Monday with Don Cheadle. Oh. Um, <laughs> And recently I directed a film called Two Distant Strangers that's available on Netflix that won the Oscar this year. And, oh, of course. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, those are some of the, the heavy hitters. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the UK, so I'm, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of, of London and UK nice. culture and grime and all the Oh, amazing, oh is he? Uh, Look at Yasha getting all excited. <laughs> Yasha's a big grime fan. <laughs> I love, I love grime. <laughs> I'm hoping to maybe work with Dave one day, or maybe oh. one of these projects. Yeah. You know, I'm a big, big fan. Of uh, uh, but yeah, that's that's the the heavy hits of, of my career, and and uh, nice. It's been it's been a fun road, man. It's been really great, and F1 obviously dominates my life uh, <laughs> during the season. So yeah, uh, no, and that's super dope. Like, and it's always cool. To, to like hear how people got into into f1 like how yeah. how did you how did you get into it so when uh when trevor became host of daily show um we were we were friends before he became host and he one day we were in the office and he was like explaining to me why f1 was like amazing and i had okay. never been to motorsports this was like seven years ago now oh wow uh, okay and so it was just like not a thing you know you grew up in the hood you don't watch nascar or any like, yeah. like <laughs> basketball football like, maybe some baseball but um him and uh david this, this other guy david kabuka who's like one of trevor's best friends another mm-hmm. writer on the show it's like one of the funniest people i know uh they were like telling me about like you have to watch the center doc and then you'll understand. Oh, yeah. what oh okay. Yeah. It'll get you into the into the sport. And so, you know, initially, I didn't immediately go do it. <laughs> and then <laughs> I finally, I finally one night was sitting up and it was like bored and yeah, like scrolling through Netflix and I saw the Senate doc and I watched it. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit! Like this incredible, is incredible, right? Like, yeah. like this, is, this is insane. Like what have yeah. I been missing? Like how, how come <laughs> no one told me sooner? Um, <laughs> yeah, man. And so I immediately just like dove in, like, and just became obsessed with how incredible the talents are and how ridiculously like hard it is to be an F1 driver. Cause I yeah. love skill sports. I love skill things. Anyone who's like a craftsman or who does something that's really 
really difficult and like only a few people in the world can do it. I become like obsessed with those people and like how they find their way. Yeah. Positions. And so once I started recognizing, you know, just how much skill it took to be even the 20th uh, <laughs> yeah. on the grid, yeah. it was like, oh, this is next. This is beyond like motorsport. Like these guys are insane. And yeah, I became obsessed with it. No, yeah. That's super dope, man. That's uh, that documentary is probably like one of my favorite films. Yeah, uh, and it's, I, it's how I tell everyone to get into it. I'm like, watch Senna and then well, go watch Senna. <laughs> yeah, be the best. <laughs> that's that is actually that's a good start pack in it. Yeah, Senna and Drive to Survive, and mm-hmm. I feel that because it gets it's about like F1 is is. I think the a lot of the older people don't like the fact that people are drawn into like personalities, but that's right. what makes it even yeah. more exciting like, I mean, right. like the, yeah. the skill side and obviously the engineering side all of that stuff is incredible but yeah. it is like you know these personalities that kind of makes it this kind of whole yeah. around Senna was like a really cool guy at the time he was kind of like a Marlon Brando-esque kind of you know a bit like Hamilton at the moment that's got nothing to yeah. do with the fact that he's obviously Hamilton Stan but yeah. um like Senna was all about fashion, the girls, the fancy cars. So he was massively likable as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's also hard to get into a sport from an engineering perspective if you don't know that world because it's just yeah. so complex. Yeah. It would take years to understand the the basics of engineering in F1 if you're a casual fan, let alone the people who are like been into it for decades. And so like you need yeah. something like Drive to Survive as an entry point, which I have a lot of friends who are now casual, you know, F1 fans because of the show. Like they don't nice. understand downforce and, and <laughs> all these things, but they like, they like this person and they understand how complex and how competitive the sport is. And it's fun to watch. No, I won. 100 percent, yeah. man. Um, I actually got a text from my friend CJ last night at three a.m. and he was like, "So, what does a three-point grid mean? Like, what does that mean?" And I was like, "You have been watching a bit too much Formula One. <laughs> You've been watching Drive to Survive, and I think that's how everyone's kind of getting into it now through these Netflix yeah. documentaries that kind of don't depict the race too much, but more give the guys personalities, and I like that." Yeah. They got Ellen into F1. Like, Drive to Survive is what, what got Ellen DeGeneres into Formula One. Oh, nice. Okay. It's yeah. definitely an entry, an entry point for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I, and I think that's dope. Like, I think it's like, it's one of those things where, for me, so I'm like, obviously, a diehard fan. I'm there. I'm watching all practice sessions. I'll, I'll watch everything. I've got the timing screen on when I'm watching the race. Like, so for me, when I watch Drive to Survive, I'm like, there is some storytelling going on here. And I know that, you know, they're making it seem like he's got to catch it. But <laughs> I, I know that he was 10 seconds down the road. It's not happening. Right? Right. <laughs> but, but it's cool for people who who don't know, who haven't mm-hmm. watched the races. who right. And, who, and it, it makes a package which we watch, you know, over the course of a weekend, we'll probably watch like, how many hours of F1, you know, five and a half, six hours of F1 I'll watch right. over a weekend. But to condense a whole season into 10 hours and then every hour is like, oh, exciting. Oh my God, <laughs> like every race is crazy. <laughs> uh, I think it's great. And I think this season's Drive to Survive. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be Ooh. great. Mate, oh, this if you're a casual season. fan who aren't who isn't watching week to week, you're going to be in for a treat. <laughs> Bro, imagine watching all of this for the first time. I, uh, I'm actually jealous of yeah. all of them for sure. And look, big up all the new fans who've come. A, a lot of the new fans as well kind of follow us as well, and it's it's really yeah. cool to see. I feel like it's been a good time for us to start a podcast because, like, we've got everybody this was watching Formula One during quarantine as well. Yeah, so exactly. Now yeah, just gained a legion of fans, especially yeah. big up all the black women as well. Because yeah. a lot of black, black women, women have just really got into it. So, no, hundred yeah. percent. And now look, uh, big up the drive to survive, guys. But uh, th- something happened yesterday. Uh, <laughs> we had a race. Uh, yeah. We had a. Well, some people are calling it a classic. I feel like the word classic gets thrown around a bit too much, but. Yesterday was mm. definitely a crazy race um, for a number of reasons. Um, Trayvon, how do you watch Formula One? Do you uh, the time difference? Is it a bit mad or? Yeah, you... it's 
it's a bit crazy. I, I like, I'll watch every once in a while I'll be on the East coast. So it's like reasonable. It'll like yeah. be like 9am instead of 6am. Mm. And so um, <laughs> I'll try to like either get up depending on what happened leading up to Sunday will determine if I'm going to wake up and watch the race live or watch it uh, like soon as I actually wake up, like around yeah, now. Yeah. I'll just like not pick up my phone because people will spoil things and yeah. I'll see like alerts. So I'll, if I don't watch it live, I'll just immediately get up, turn on F1 TV and just go right into the replay. Nice, um, nice. And so, but a lot of times I'll try to wake up and watch it live. Um, but for the last month or so, I've been on the way, on the East coast. So I've been watching a lot of it live. Nice, nice. Sick. But it comes on early as hell in, in LA. They don't care about us at all. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no, no, at all. We had but someone from even LA. Eight AM would be a little like better. Yeah, but, you know. it's it's a lot. I can. Uh, I, I'm not jealous. I, I'm, I'm jealous of where you are, but not the airport times. <laughs> I mean, sometimes practice is like two or three a.m. in the morning. Like, oh. like, I, man, I can't, I can't yeah, do it, guys. <laughs> skip. <laughs> Gotta watch it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, skip that. Skip that, Tandy. Hello. How, uh, I, I've done like, I'm so excited to talk about this race. I'm trying to yeah. think like. What I'm angle gonna, we should pierce it I'm going to like, how do we get into this? How yeah, do we get yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go with, first and foremost, uh, there was another sprint qualifying race. Let's talk about that because that kind of sets the scene <laughs> for what happens in the race. So yeah. we have sprint qualifying for those you you know who are kind of I guess you don't know uh, spring qualifying they have a shorter race basically uh, yeah. which is only like eighteen laps or something um, yeah. and the idea is that uh, wherever you finish in the sprint qualifying that's where you end up for the race so eighteen laps it's supposed to be quick fast action loads of things going on um, it happens the only thing that happens is that Lewis Hamilton goes from was it second place yeah, yeah. To, all the way to fourth to, to fifth fifth he goes, to, he goes to fifth yeah he ended up fourth because Bottas uh Bottas had an engine uh, oh, uh pe- yeah. new engine pin so he got a grid penalty taken to the back so everyone went up a place mm-hmm. um, yeah. But uh, Tandy, what are your thoughts on 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 sprint qualifying? When I was you... watching, because I hate the sprint races, don't I? Like, I just don't understand yeah. them at all. I don't to this day. I still don't understand why they were introduced. They were to make why it exciting. Was... Exciting. I'm not excited. I'm not no? excited. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it <laughs> does shorten my day though, because sometimes you know, quali can take up a lot of the day, so it is shorter. Um, okay. But. When that Hamilton incident happened, I was thinking back to last week's podcast where you were voicing your concerns about Mercedes, and I was like, "Oh God, how are we going to do on Sunday?" Do you know what I mean? So, but I was happy for the McLaren boys; they did absolutely fantastic, didn't they? Like they've had a great yeah. weekend. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. McLaren, McLaren did great. Uh, mm-hmm. I think qualifying. Uh, th- uh, fourth and fifth uh, yeah. behind Verstappen. Um, mm-hmm. Trayvon, um, what are your thoughts on on the sprint race on on Hamilton uh, I and and I guess the whole yeah before we get into the main race. I don't I don't care for the sprints very much because they don't yeah. they don't do anything but like make things worse for for Mercedes. <laughs> 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 like, like they, Mercedes can can be great on on the on the pole on the qualifying session, and then like the 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 sprint is just more room for error, <laughs> and it seems to always be affecting them. I mean the the even when Lewis got what speed king at Silverstone, Silverstone when we had the first sprint, it was yeah. like. Like he was finally finding his form again. He had to go do another freaking race. Yeah. And, and <laughs> find Max again. And you're just like, it It doesn't provide much entertainment beyond lap one. Yeah. And you don't have enough time to like strategize. A co- like Lewis was stuck behind Lando yeah. for the entirety of that, of that sprint. And he couldn't make any move. He couldn't do anything. Yeah. And he had a he had a poor start off the off the line, but it it doesn't seem to do anything spectacular. I mean, I feel like if you're going to do something, maybe reverse the grid like they do in F two, yeah, and like really make it interesting. But 
otherwise it's just like it's not really doing like this week people at McLaren will probably feel like this was great like they love this like if the sprints like benefiting you in that particular we only had two but yeah it like, worked out great for them and uh the the Mercedes power unit is working great for for some other people <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but um I'm I can do without it man like just just like qualify and get on on with the race get on with the weekend yeah. and if you can't find a way to make the sprint race more than just 18 laps of what we're going to get on Sunday. Um, then, cause I mean, how many grid places really changed? Uh, 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 I, I don't think there was much. Yeah. It was only a handful, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great for the midfield cause that's where the action happens in those, those overtakes when the, when in, in lap one, where you mm. see a lot of people changing places and positions. But if you're in the top, if you're in the, the front two rows, there's not a lot happening for you. It's just rude. It's just giving you an opportunity to fuck something up. <laughs> if you're in that. Yeah. Everyone else in the back, like they're jockeying for, it's great for you guys, for them. So mm. yeah, I can yeah. do it. I, let's play, I want to play devil's advocate uh, in that I've been consuming a lot of the F1 propaganda machine. So these guys oh God. are forcing these spin races down our throat. I blame Honestly. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I like, so you've got, uh, so obviously on commentary, Martin Brundle saying this is much better than having a practice session. It was an actual race. Mm. Uh, I think Ross Braun, I think they were saying that F1 had their highest ratings for the season. Uh, over this weekend, Do you uh, the production uh, of the sprint race, or just because think, it was well, this is the look. Well, we because he is saying that, but we don't know. There's a there's a somebody lying, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. I, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, yeah I don't. but I think for I guess what they're trying to do the same way, I guess, with cricket. You know, cricket's doing short form stuff. Um, they're trying to uh, condense uh, a race. They think making a, a, a shorter package will get younger people. That's what they've been saying. But younger people have been saying, "I don't want uh, shorter races. I want I want to be able to afford wait, to watch wait, it." Wait, wait, wait. Who are <laughs> talking about? Younger people. Old young people want it. The yeah, young yeah. people. It's the always younger. the young people. <laughs> Who are these people and how do they get them? I, I like, well, the thing is, the young people on Twitter are like, this, is, this isn't even what we want. So, Surely I'm um, part of the young people. Yeah, you are. I don't yeah, want you it. Are. You don't want it? Okay, well, no. we'll, we'll, we'll write to Ross Braun uh, <laughs> immediately. Uh, and, and like you said, Trayvon, it is literally just all everything to lose. And mm-hmm. Lewis Hamilton lost out big time. Um, Mercedes starts his in particular have not been great this year um, and he's lost out he's gone down to fifth and you know it's just uh, like I say after that he's stuck behind Norris I think next year we'll see if the cars can overtake easier maybe it's a better, better uh, package but for now um, yeah uh, I'm not a fan of it either but we go into the race um, we go into the race off the line, Lewis manages to get into third place uh, and then tries to overtake Verstappen around the outside and bails out. You know, they they touch, he, they bail out. Further down the line, we might as well just get into it. Let's do it. We're going to do a quick stop court. Court is in session. Order. Is in session. Order. Order. Um, right. So... The incident of the weekend, it yeah. went off. Um, they went, they've they made contact again mm. into turn one and two. Mm. Lewis has come out of the pit. Mm. You know, let me set the scene, actually. Let me set the scene. Okay. So, in the part of the race, pit stops have happened. Both McLarens have pitted. Um, Verstappen then... Oh, no, sorry, Ricardo's pitted. Then Verstappen pits. Verstappen spends 11 seconds in the pit there's been an issue with the front right uh apparently the geezer didn't press the okay button on the thing to say so the guy was holding the uh oh, lollipop so- saying like you can't yeah. go because you've only got three and then there's like oh then they did it so 11 seconds in the pit 
Mercedes, instead of going long on the hard tyre, think, okay, this is our opportunity. We're going to undercut Max Verstappen, uh, basically because he's spent so long in the pits. All we've got to do is do a pit stop, which is like, at, no, longest pit stop, three and a half seconds. Yeah? Right. These guys at Mercedes, F it up again. F it up again in the pits. Uh, it's a 4.6 second stop. He ah. comes out alongside, he comes out behind Ricardo, yeah. uh, alongside Max Verstappen, uh, and they go into turn one alongside each other. Turn two, Max doesn't give way, and he, you know, he, he tries to go around the corner with Lewis, and he ends up clipping the rear of Lewis's car, mounting Lewis's car. The back of Verstappen's wheel hits Hamilton's head. Lands on his head top. And the car lands on his head. Max Verstappen says, that's what you get when you don't leave space. Uh, walks hey, out. That's he's, so evil. He's, uh, it's what he said. Um, Sorry, call his then, session. Let me relax. Yeah, call it. Order, order, order. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then, what, and then he's walked off and he's walked back to the pits. Hamilton's tried to reverse out from underneath. Um, but he couldn't, and then he he obviously gets out as well. So he has a sore neck. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're here today to place a verdict in the case of Verstappen versus Hamilton 002, following from 001 at the British Grand Prix. Trayvon, juror number one. And look, not that I'm proud of being part of the judiciary and uh <laughs> By the way, okay, this is purely for comedic purposes. But, um, yeah, someone has to be guilty. We we don't do racing incidents. It is someone's fault. So if you had to apportion blame onto one person, who is that person and why? I mean, it's it's clearly Max's fault. And everyone knew it. <laughs> and everyone saying it's a it's a racing incident or it's fifty fifty or complete completely full of shit. And if if roles were reversed, they'd be trying to hang Lewis for for, for yes. trying to squeeze into that turn. And yeah. when we watched in in turn one in lap one, when Max or when Lewis like took the egg took the curb and cut through because he couldn't squeeze through, and yet this particular time Max had to and for some reason could not make the same ditch and just cross over uh, over the curb because there was no room in that turn. But the fact that he, sque- he squeezed him, tried to squeeze himself in when there was no room on the actual track and then blame him and Christian have the nerve to blame it on Lewis for not giving him room. It, it, it's, it's so, it just speaks so heavily to the entitlement mm-hmm. that Mac feels and that, that mm-hmm. uh, Christian feels. Like now I, I, at this point I've started calling him Christian Corners because he thinks he's entitled to every corner on If Max is anywhere near it, it's his corner, and like it's it's such an insanely absurd thing to believe. And like the fact that your car ended up on top of his head, and you think it's a fifty fifty, like come on, bro! Like it's so ridiculous, and you had no regard for his health or life after after it happened. You just like you don't care. And I mean, I honestly, I think he should have been a five place grip and only, but fine, three. Yeah, we'll take it. But as much as the war between them is like boiled up up to this point, especially between Max and Lewis fans, like it's it's so crazy that I don't. There's a vi- there's a great video of uh, Christian Horner defending Max doing exactly what happened at uh, Silverstone, defending Max doing that to someone else on the same yes. track. And when you watch it, you cannot believe it's the same person who was acting the way he acted after uh, they made contact at Silverstone. Like, I would love to see him watch side by side his defense of Max and then his condemnation of Lewis after the same thing because he can't defend it. And it's, it's like, right. it just makes me so mad to watch it every week. And the, the cherry on top for me is like, Verstappen fans are so racist. <laughs> like, like all you have to do is be proud of uh-huh. five minutes. And 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> the gunshots, I, I didn't know there was that many he gunshots. Did. He did. just kept going. <laughs> Bro, there were so many gunshots in there. It was. <laughs> Carry on, Trayvon. Sorry. It, it, I mean, it, it really doesn't take long for you to scroll through ver, like Red Bull fan comments before it becomes mm. racist. It does not take long at all. And that makes it even easier to like fight against Red Bull and any success they might have because then you feel like, I'm not just supporting a driver. I'm supporting like anti racism. <laughs> yeah. And that's easy to support. Yeah, that is. For some people. Wow, that is. That is bro. Your, your you verdict need, is. Drink uh, your water, please. Drink your water because bro. I don't. <laughs> really, really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. That was, that was lovely. Be said. Honestly, thank you so much. That was great. You can see why he's writing all these incredible things. <laughs> you can see. I was I was moved. Tandy. Hello. Um mm. uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, look. What do you think? You know, I'm trying to I think, right, here's yeah. what I think here. What do you think? We're Let's in court right now. We're in court. This is either two different cases, you guys. This is probably this is either a case of bad parking. Or this is an attempted murder case, yeah? Oh, wow. I personally think it's both, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Man okay. decided to park on Hamilton's head, and yeah. the other is you either tried to kill him. Either way, I feel Max came out of the pits super angry on some Tasmanian devil shit and yeah. was literally out for vengeance. It's, it's, it's very clear. They call this man Mad Max. It's clear yeah. his motive from the get-go. And then I don't know if anyone saw me tweeting. I was very angry. I was I was in bed, you know. I was watching the whole thing. And what was particularly pissing me off, guys, and I'm gonna be honest with this, some people need to grab a backbone, is those people who were like, it's a racing incident, but Max is mostly at fault. How the fuck does that make sense? <laughs> it's a racing incident, but it's mostly Max's fault. Grab a backbone and say it is Max's fault because you can't. There's no yeah. way you can belong to both ends. You're not making yeah. sense, mate. And as Trayvon said, it should have been a five-point grid penalty because three is not enough, mate. You landed yeah. on his head. And not only did you land on his head, you didn't even show, like, sportsmanship when you got out of the car. You literally just... And he was you still ready. Just, it's just it's crazy. Up. He walked was still up. revving the same guy. Was dead. This is yeah. the same guy who was crying Red about how Red. how disrespectful Lewis is. I'm in hospital and you're talking about your your glories, whatever. Bro, you landed on his head. You parked on his head and then you walked off. That is attempted murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's good that we can all laugh about it now. And thank God for, because for honestly, the Halo thank device. God for the Halo. Um, you know... I can sure imagine if in this season, if Verstappen had killed Lewis Hamilton, just you can have to end F one. You'd have to end it. The sport no, would be over. I would riot. I don't know about you, like, man, but I'm rioting. Um, I don't know where we, I'd start. Like but we'd I'd have riot. to go to the Instagram and just start fires. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know what I mean? Um. It's uh, uh, what I think struck me the most hmm. about the reaction to it and look twitter is one thing tribalism is tribalism you know this is probably the most i i'd say fractious i mean not that i was ever really on f on twitter before we started this but i guess for me it just feels like and a lot of people have been saying it's the most fractious it's been for f1 fans in terms of like the hamilton fans the verstappen fans um you know, and it's, it's, it is like creating a thing. There's reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Aforementioned racism, you know, the just the way that, and I, I guess for me, hearing the response to the incident on Sunday was really disheartening. Seeing drivers, ex-drivers, there's a whole analysis on Sky. This is how you know, you know what Sky Sports is like. I've clocked it. Sky Sports is like Fox News. <laughs> like, that's... They're owned by the same person. Rupert yeah, Murdoch and, and, will pay for his crimes in hell. We know this already. <laughs> Trust Rupert Murdoch, Murdoch, you're going to pay for your crimes in jail, bruv. 
Um, mm -hmm. But these guys, it's like propaganda. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, you've got Paul DeResta in front of a screen showing you Max Verstappen with no space to go and going, well, you know, there, he's, got, he's got enough space to go. He's got, he's, got to, he's got to go for the corner. There's no corner to go for. Right. There was li literally not a single bit of racetrack for this guy to go for. He could have bailed out. They ask Felipe Massa. They say, Massa, you know, should Max have backed out? He says, no, that, Max is the Dutch lion. He doesn't back up. I'm sorry, but in this day and age, you know, like, you know that saying where everyone's like, who the hell is asking Ja Rule? Who the hell is asking Felipe Massa, please? <laughs> who is asking Felipe Massa for any take? No Felipe one. Why are we even Massa asking you? And Mass is most famous for getting no. done on the line by Hamilton. Like, exactly. of course, he's probably still better. But um, Trayvon, I guess uh, I'm trying to think from here. I mean, Max Verstappen is guilty, by the way. Like, you know, like he's. Mm -hmm. But uh, can you see like a change in this kind of narrative at the not narrative, but this kind of pattern? that is clearly happening now where Max Verstappen, if Lewis doesn't back out, I'll ask this question. Do you ever foresee a situation where Max Verstappen uses some common sense, thinks of the championship, but I guess at the moment he's ahead, but, and just says, you know what? I'm going to back out. Or do you think that something like this is basically, we've got eight races left. Do you think something like this is going to happen again? Honestly, I don't think Max has the mental like maturity to understand the same thing that Hamilton has understood for seven championships, which is knowing when to take the risk and knowing when not to, and knowing when to protect your title and when not to. When you have the car that is, usually the fastest car on, on, on the weekend. And like Silverstone was a great example. If if Max just backs, just backs out of that corner and lets Lewis have it, he can probably catch him at some point in the race. Yeah. Like worst case scenario, you get 18 points that week, that weekend, but you're still competing for the title, but you don't wreck your car, you get a DNF. Whereas like Lewis has been spending all this time seeding corners to Max and, and like protecting his car. And at some point, if you're competing for a championship, you have to say enough is enough and I'm not going to to do this with you anymore. So I, I feel like Lewis is done backing out of corners for Max and Max isn't smart enough to know how to strategically compete in a race, I think, when it comes to making a decision when to fight for something and can, that could potentially knock you out of the race and cost you and get you zero points versus trying to be strategic and win a race, get points, catch Lewis or catch the Mercedes and and put yourself back in the front. You know, yeah. I don't I don't see him having that. He's not demonstrated to me at all that he's capable of no. making that decision. Every mm -hmm. time he's faced with it, he chooses violence every time. Yeah. He he does not have it in him to be a strategic racer. It's either I'm in front or I'll knock you off the track. And and and, and so many other racers have said it. And you see yeah. it on video. Like there's so many montages of him just knocking people off the track or cutting people off. And they have to always uh, see to him and people are tired of it. It's like, you're competing for a championship. It's like, if this is how you want to drive Max, then fuck mm -hmm. it. We're going to do it together. Like yeah. we're just doing it together. And until you figure out you're either going to, this is going to be what your career is like, and yeah. you'll never win a championship or you'll, or you'll, you'll edge out one in your career and you'll waste all this time never knowing how to master the mental aspect of competitive driving exactly. because you want to be quote unquote lion. Like, like, like grow up, dude. Like, <laughs> like, Oh, he's so mature. 23 years old. He's been racing for seven years. It yeah. doesn't matter that he's 23. He's not 23 on the track. Like yeah. he didn't start racing last season. Like he's <laughs> yeah. got seven years of experience under his belt. And this is still like, how he races and so yeah. like i don't i don't there's see no growth change. is there yeah I, I definitely agree there's he's just been stagnant in his behavior no sportsmanship no decorum i'd actually like to see nyasha make um a compilation video of every time max Verstappen has been in the wrong and he's got away with it because i'm pretty sure <laughs> 
I, I thought of making the Verstappen fan cam, you know, but the thought of just having to go through. They gonna call you Vers- a nigger. They'll <laughs> 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 call you an N word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, uh, you know what? Verstappen, yeah. I mean, look, to be fair to Red Bull races, I mean, racing. Um, <laughs> They, there's no way to be fair to Red Bull Racing. I mean, they just, they don't make it easy to support. I mean, the, the amount of people who turned on them after Silverstone because of how hard they were going at Lewis and the fact that they they basically created a racist, like, firestorm for him to endure and took no responsibility for it. And meanwhile, Christian knew exactly what he was doing. And it, it's like, who had to fire someone for racist text on their team? It wasn't. It was, it was Red Bull. Red Bull, huh. Red Bull yeah. Racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this exactly. I want to make sure everyone heard that clearly. Go on, say it. Red Bull Racing. <laughs> <laughs> and there yeah. was a point in the season. There was a point in the season where, I mean, even in the last two seasons, where like as a fan of the sport, I wanted to enjoy Max as a driver, but it, it just became impossible. Yeah. Truly yeah. Possible. You had to either be a Red Bull diehard or you had to accept what was blatantly like just casual and sometimes like not so casual yeah, racist yeah, behavior yes. and and taking no responsibility for it and not even recognizing the fact that you, you're you're doing this to the only black driver in your sport. Like the and that like it if for someone like me who is a champion of, of anti-racism and fighting against these types of things. It's it's hard to watch sometimes and see Lewis go through it and, and recognize that the sport itself doesn't yeah. protect him. Mm. Can I can I ask you a question? So in the UK, Hamilton is not universally loved. Um, in fact, there's a strong proportion of F1 fans. Lewis is, oh, let's, before people, that Lewis is the most popular Formula One driver on the grid. And by default, he will be the most popular Formula One driver in the UK. Right. However, and you know, because he's the best. However, <laughs> there's a very strong uh, uh, proportion of F1 fans who hate Lewis Hamilton. Uh, the press, are not especially uh the daily uh, mail awesome. yeah and their <laughs> praise of him like they yeah they 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 they're not nice to it. And, you know they obviously they'll praise him they'll praise his achievements but there's it doesn't take much for them to run exposés or 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 not give him the credit he deserves i guess as as an american lewis loves america and i, and I think america loves Lewis and it almost feels as if Lewis is probably better suited to being an American than <laughs> being British. Yeah. But which is sad. Like but I guess for you as an American and probably with American F one fans, what does like how what does Lewis Hamilton mean to you guys and like and, and do you guys notice I guess do you guys notice how he's perceived over here and do you understand that? And you know, and I guess how do you guys feel about that? I feel like most people probably don't know the his his uh like where the love for him is in the UK because on the outside looking in you think the country itself like just holds him up as a hero um but if you're not seeing or tracking the day to day you know uh experience of you know how he's treated or talked about you wouldn't necessarily know it but like here I think he's so loved amongst the F1 fans that I see and know because of like, we love a story like Lewis Hamilton's. Like, yeah. it's just like, it's such an American thing to love a story of like <laughs> the one guy doing the thing where being in the place where he doesn't belong and like defying the odds and then rising to the top of it. And do, like, that's just like American storytelling. Like that's Hollywood one oh one. And so I think in that regard with the things he's into with passion and music and like the culture of celebrity that we have here, I think he does fit into it pretty well. Yeah. But um, I think it's it's interesting 
that one, there's just not as many. I don't think F1 fans here as, yeah. as, as in other countries. Um, but he tends, I find he tends to be the favorite of the people that I meet. Like, it's like, he's yeah. an easy favorite. Um, I know, I know a couple of Red Bull guys, like, yeah. um, <laughs> But and even even they have a hard time this season, like defending Max. So they're not they're not those kind of Red Bull fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's gross, guys. Um, <laughs> but I think um, I think it's 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 he has a big big support system over here. Um, I mean, they don't. Our media doesn't care about Formula One in the same way. Yeah. So it's not a lot of people like even in our tabloids who care about you know, tearing him down or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but the the people who I tend to encounter in the motorsport spaces tend, tend to either, you either find people who love him, even the casual fans like gravitate toward Lewis. Like my, I have a friend who his young daughters, he just like exposed them to the sport and he didn't even tell them who, who he was a fan of or who to like. They just chose Lewis. Yeah. And, and it was like, they and they were like because we just feel like he's nice and he's uh, someone we can look at. Like they made that assessment on their own. Yeah. And so I feel like people <laughs> here just kind of gravitate toward him in that way. And I, I think it also goes back to the fact that we just gravitate toward these the underdogs. And like Lewis, even rising to goat level, did it as the underdog. I still find is one of the most miraculous feats in all of sports, especially yeah. a sport like like a. Uh, that sort of individual, like, even though you're on a team, it's like, you're still like, you're the only one in your car. And um, that to me is really, really impressive. No, no, that's sick to hear, man. Really cool to hear. I always wonder as well, because I know there's not particularly a really large F1 community in the States as well. So, do they all? Do you think they all tend to gravitate towards being Lewis fans because he is a black man, or do you think more people gravitate just kind of whatever Formula One they like and enjoy? I think it's. I think it's partly because I think fans who find a sport that they probably are just are new to or haven't been exposed to, you tend to gravitate toward the top of like, well, if I'm going to be a fan, I want to be a fan of the guy who like who wins or the guy who like yeah. most people, I, don't, I don't know many people coming in and being like Haas baby give me that Haas you know that American it's crazy right. Right. leave Haas alone right. <laughs> like it's just it's even though I know some some Haas fans who are like <laughs> suffering through uh, supporting the back of the grid but it's <laughs> it's like it's like coming to America and choosing to be like a Mets fan or something like you want to be a fan of a team that's either localized or like that at least has a, is a middle of the pack. Like that you can yeah. have, like you can have some occasional McLaren podiums with, if you like choose a team like that. Yeah. But I think people, I think people who are finding the sport, like at least here are, when you look at a, a, a sport like F1 and you see 20 racers and one of them is black, that makes you go, Hmm, that's interesting. Because that's like this. That's the society we live in, yeah. like of black excellence in spaces where we don't normally uh, or haven't historically had the opportunity to be in or the opportunity to succeed in. And when, uh, like, when Trevor basically told me about you know F one, like him and Lewis are friends, and so yeah, uh, it was like, oh wait, there's one black driver in the whole sport, like <laughs> ever. Well, yeah. I don't have. Think about which team I'm supporting. <laughs> the rest of you guys, if it's the black guy versus the grid, I'm choosing the black guy every time. I don't care if he's in car 20. I'm rolling the black <laughs> every time because it's it, it's connected to us in a different way. Like we yeah. know what it feels like to be that underdog and mm. like to have a system just be stacked against you and you somehow find a way to thrive in it. And so it's easy to gravitate toward Lewis for that reason alone. And it just so happens that he ends up being the greatest person on the, on the track. He's the greatest. I don't know how many times I have to tell people. <laughs> how many times I have to go on this microphone and tell you that? And when he wins this year, God, you've had this conversation. You don't think we're Hamilton biased. Let me tell you now. When this guy wins the eighth title, 
I mean, insufferable. I mean, insufferable. 2018, he was he was down to Sebastian Vettel with eight races to go, and <laughs> he he managed to fucking steal the steal the title, man. He put in beast mode, okay, and he was gonna put in beast mode on Sunday. He would have won that race, man. He would have won. He would have won. It was at clear. Least, at least the um, competitive streak with Vettel was respectful. Guys. Yeah, yeah that is what we're you saying. Never, we're not saying all the white that. people are on the grid who aren't Hamilton are racist because Sebastian Vettel picks picks litter and he switches the lights <laughs> off. Yeah, we like him. But with Sebastian Vettel, it was very it was a respectable it was a respectful competitiveness and yeah, and this one just isn't. So tell yeah, me it's, it's not it's not respectful. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lewis rang Max after Silverstone. You know. Um, that doesn't seem to have done anything, Max. You know, Max never tweeted. Did Lewis well, ring? Did Lewis ring Max? No, I don't think he's banging this time. I think they they spoke in the stewards' room, um, but just Max <laughs> tweeting crud after both crashes. Yeah, yeah. Like, and so you've not learned from the first one. Yeah, someone should like, tell his Twitter fingers turn to trigger fingers, and we're oh coming. To it. He's getting bodied by a singing nigger. <laughs> um, uh, uh, right, look. <laughs> As much as I would love to, um, <laughs> but as much as I would love to carry on this conversation, there was a race that there carried race. on after the crash. Um, let's get into it. Um, on a lighter note. Again, what did you say? Tony? Is it on a lighter note? Yeah, on a lighter note. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just I do love having a note. What a guy. Um, on a lighter note, uh, there was a race. It was an incredible, yeah. uh, incredible race. Uh, incredible outcome. Big up to McLaren and big up to Daniel Ricciardo. Um, Tandy, we'll circle the block for you. Rob was in the building tonight. Trayvon, we'll come back to you. I will come back to you. Tandy, who's your star of the day? The Honey Badger. Oh, okay. You're lucky, Tandy, that I didn't have time because what I did do was what go guy back. Talking about? I literally did it, yeah. You know, we've got sound effects here. Yeah. I actually had uh, the, the conversations mm-hmm. where you were telling me that you, it was time to have the Daniel Ricardo conversation. You were saying, oh, he's just walking around, he's just smiling, he's feeling. the evidence or it didn't happen. Oh, look at this. This is how you know Tandy's toxic. I don't know what you guys are on about. But look, uh, Tandy, I know Mm. you're a massive uh, Ricardo fan. Mm. I know this season was hurting you. Um, Wait, do you know when you were were saying about his mates denying him in the stands? Could you explain that story, please? Okay, so... um, that was a joke. I think oh. people thought I was being serious. Oh. But, um, so Daniel was doing an interview uh, and, you know, in the pen. And then he looked up and his friends were shouting, like, oh, and he's like, oh my God, it's like my best friends are here. They didn't even tell me they were here. Oh, um, they were here. Are you flying to Italy? He's not telling him you're there until he's won. Because they weren't sure like, how the race was going to go in it. They were like, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I was like, so they waited until he won. His, his form was so bad, they didn't tell him. Aww. And uh, people were like, oh, I need Daniel Ricardo's friend. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't no, know who that is. Like, I'm so happy for Daniel. <laughs> he's been on a buzz since like yesterday. He's been tweeting. His yeah. cute little selfies, a, his big smile, bless him. And like, but guys... That shoey thing is so gross. Like, let's yeah. be very honest. Like, I don't care how much I love Daniel Ricardo. There's no way I am backing a shoey. No, do the shoey. No, are you gonna do a shoey? Uh, I've had worse. Trayvon, are you, are you, are you no, doing a shoey? I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. We, we have to stop this. Please. In the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a pandemic. Mendo was perfectly right after he made the mistake of doing it. Never again. It smelled horrible. Like, it's, <laughs> it's gross. Stop it's it. So Do you know what's mad as well? Shoe. <laughs> Do you know what's mad? Um, F1 drivers lose like what? Two stone? Of ra- or like uh, on the yeah. highest t- temperatures, they lose like a lot of weight in a race. Yeah. Uh, so that's in Singapore when it's like super hot. But obviously there, they, they sweat. Uh, they, they've got 
a fire protective layer <sighs> then they've got the race suit then they've got the head thing yeah. then yeah. they've got the gloves like then they've got the shoes that is and they've got the helmet inside of freaking jet which is going yeah. around for an hour and a half yeah do you know how much this guy sweated into that shoe? Oh my god, it's disgusting! <laughs> like, I did, I clocked it. I was like, oh, it might not be too. But then when I really thought about it, like, uh, a case in point, by the way, those socks are so thick that Roman Grosjean, when he was in the fire last year, mm-hmm. his shoe come off, yeah, mm-hmm. and his foot was fine. <laughs> <laughs> his foot was fine. He got burns on other places. His foot was fine. Because those socks jump- were so thick. Huh? Because the those- socks were... Bro- them socks are thick, bruv. Them li- the, 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 the protective like, thing really they've got in. I'm not going to lie. I'm really disgusted right now. <laughs> that is really yeah. gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is Lando disgusting. spat his out. Yeah. It's, I don't you know. know he- Valtteri's got the right idea, man. I'm not doing it. Not <laughs> doing no, it. Just like that. Valtteri's <laughs> a man yeah. of class. I'll give it to not you that. Man. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Trayvon, Daniel Ricciardo, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're happy for him, really happy for him. Is this the start of the, the Daniel Ricciardo revival? You know what? I don't, I'm not sold yet simply because if he can, if he can have this type of drive and these type of results in a non sprint weekend, if he can fight for these positions and race and drive like this, you know, on on a regular, I would I would be more apt to believe it's a tr- it's a trending toward him, you know, starting to turn it around. You know, he's had a he seems to have had a hard time like getting a uh, getting the hang of the McLaren this season. Yeah, and and you know, Lando was like like third in the championship, and yeah, um, you know, it was it was interesting too to hear them ask Lando, you know, where were you guys gonna have were they going to do team orders and have him let you uh, take first place? And he was like, no, yeah. no, no. It was great to see Danny win. And uh, yeah. it's just Lando's, Lando's a class act. But, he he um, sunned him a little bit. <laughs> like he sunned him a bit. He, he was like, no, you can have that one. Danny's right. had a hard season. So you've right. been making him have a hard season. Right. 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 So you, you've been trying it like that. But, no, it's, it's good to see him, you know, get in the mix, even with eight races left, for him to get yeah. in the mix. Because, like, you know, I think – What's what'll be interesting about his legacy, you know, when his career is over is like, you know, he's a he is a team hopper, man. Like he is yeah. trying to find the right car somewhere, but I feel like he's just not been anywhere long enough to give himself time to like to get the drive right. And it's I don't think it's gonna always come so quickly, but um I hope that that he continues to, you know, this might be the the spark that he needs. So yeah. like give him the confidence to drive the car in the way that he did. I was I was probably as surprised as everyone to see him get off the line the way he did. And, and yeah. I was like, wait, that's Daniel Ricardo? What? <laughs> How's he driving so fast? But like who knew who knew he had that kind of pace in, in, in Italy? But um yeah, no, it was good to see him up there. And I'm glad he gets he gets to drive the uh the, the, oh, Nelson, the Martin, NASCAR. Martin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the NASCAR now. The Danny Ricky Bobby gets to show up to the track. So, yeah, that's really cool, man. I'm happy for him. Trayvon, do you, right. think, do you think Daniel belongs at McLaren? Do you think that's his home now? I don't... You know, it. this season, like, Lando's clearly the number one driver on that team mm-hmm. to me. And Danny, from, from, his, from Red Bull to now, he seems to have not given himself time to really find a home, I think this this feels the most homey to me he's he, that he's had in a, in a while. In a while, yeah. yeah. And I and I don't know like where else on the grid when you look at where players or where drivers are and contracts are, like there's nowhere left for him to go. Yeah. And try to make a home somewhere. So I think it's imperative that he tries to find or make this a place he can stay and grow. Like commit. Yeah. To you know, if Zach Brown commits to him, he should commit to McLaren because they're 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 doing really fucking well. Like those that car is yeah. really driving, and it's going to be interesting to see you know next year when we have this whole new new setup, like who who rises to the top. But it's like 
just commit somewhere, Danny. Like, it's like, I know he seems like you have commitment issues. I don't know. Is he married? Is he a girlfriend? I don't know. But, um, like, give, give McLaren time and learn yeah. the car and give yourself a chance mm-hmm. to potentially compete for a title, man. <clears throat> What do you, what, what's your answer to that, Tandy? Yeah, I quite I quite like him. I liked I like Daniel at Red Bull, but I feel like he was really bullied out of the role. You know, when you're in a job and it's just everyone kind of just goes against you. I've been there, done that, and I really yeah. feel for for Danny on that one. So I really like what they're doing with him at McLaren, and it feels like nearly every day they're just celebrating something about him, and it might not be his wins; it might just be like anything else that he's done and he just he's always smiling it seems like every day that's like passing him a birthday cake or just celebrating daniel as a racer <laughs> and i love that for him um <laughs> and yeah very true say lando is going towards uh, the direction of being the if not he already is in that position being the top driver but it doesn't feel competitive it honestly just feels like two brothers who are just happy to be flying the McLaren flag and just doing their thing together. And you don't see that all the time with two drivers who are willing to say, do you know what? Let him go. Let him have it. Do yeah. You know I mean? But I think it's the it's a safe space for him. He's been taken care of and let it keep going, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, no. I the the sport is in a better place when mm-hmm. Ricardo's happy and winning yeah. and you know, it's it's and one of those. He is the sorry, he really is the sunshine of the grid. Let's be honest. He's got a better yeah. style. Who who brings more banter? Yeah, you know I mean the shoe is gross, but you, as we say, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was um, yeah, really cool, really cool seeing Daniel. Uh, you know, just seeing those celebrations. I I got goosebumps like when he was when he lifted his visor up. He was oh, like. Wow. And like, <laughs> I just put out, I was just like, he's just like such great value. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, I think people think when we get at people, we do it from like a place of hate, but it's like a place of love. I always like, say it. Concerned you know I mean? we love, we, there's drivers that we love and we want more from. Mm-hmm. And when we, when you don't see someone, and like, you know, we don't know. He said, you know, um, he's had a really hard year. Obviously, you're changing teams. I, he's probably had to move to London or not London, probably had to move to England. Um, um, that's a good point. Danny Ricardo is like in England. Like, we need to like. Whereabouts in England? Can... Woking <laughs> is where the factory is. So really? I wonder if he's got a yard in, in Woking. Never really thought of that. Anyway, hmm. um, he, but he, obviously, like, Australia's been closed. Like, you cannot go yeah. to Australia, you cannot leave Australia. That is. Like they done what we were supposed to do. They're an island in the arse end of nowhere. They should have. <laughs> they locked it down. You can't yeah. go in. Come. We were just like, no. The, anyone can go. In, anyone can come out. So he's oh, not seen his half parents. Half party. That's what we were like. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, his. Uh, did you see Zach Brown? I thought Zach Brown was showing him a selfie. And it was like taking a selfie with him, but he, had, he still had his helmet on and he was showing him and it was his mum on FaceTime. Oh, wow. Um, and then he was like, oh, mama, mama, mama. Oh, okay. So he, he said in an interview that he's like, he, he, sometimes he just wants a hug from his mum. He's not had it. And, you know, these are human beings. You know, Lewis has spoke about the lockdown and, you know, how difficult it, it's been. And, you know, I guess when you when you're you don't have those home company. I feel like every week he's in a new city. He's in New York right now. <laughs> like, oh, now everything's <laughs> open up. He's fine. You right. know what I mean? Good I feel like when he when he couldn't jet set. Uh-huh. He was just, All I'm gonna me. say is Lewis has got hose in different area codes. I'm sure <laughs> oh, he's fine. Dude, you okay. Know. <laughs> Having a, good time. a whole table at the Met Gala. Do you know how much money you got to have <laughs> a whole <laughs> table at the it. Met? Bro, not 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 a seat. No, it's a whole, whole day table. A whole table, and he's filled it with black people and mm-hmm. black celebrities. So that's gonna the content from that's gonna be great. I just want to say, big up all of the racists under the tweet I made about Lewis buying a table at the Met Gala. <laughs> oh my god, bro! Whoever said that he, or well, I guess he's not taking his mum. You can rot in hell. Honestly, honestly. you like, will be sat next to Kristen Horner. Bro. And the other lot. <laughs> that is a, 
How are you bringing his mum? Like, do you know what I mean? Like that, like, he wouldn't take his mum anyway. What's right. wrong with you? You wouldn't take your mum to the Met Gala? Uh, my mum, mm. no. But, um, I wouldn't, I would. Would you? I think the I Met would. Gala. No, there's too much cocaine for me to be taking my mum to the Met Gala. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, like, I can't expose my mum to that, man. But anyway, move on. Uh, so, uh, who was your star of the day? Um, I, it, it feels like a little teamy, but it's not why I'm picking him. But I think Valtteri was probably my star of the no, day. Let's, let's I hear that. Back in the year to the podium, man, that drive was, it was impressive, man. Really I mean, good. I want to, really wanted to give it to Danny, but like he started at the front and he, he kept, he kept it, which is great. But I mean, I feel like for everything Valtteri's been going through, yeah. And and like just he just keep he gets his feet cut out from under him so often. You know, he gets he wins he wins on the sprint weekend and then he has to start from the back of the grid and yeah. He just the way he fought his way back to the front, man, was just so impressive. I just thought it was so great to see him. He feels like he's loosened up now. Like he's like it's the news is out and he knows he's going somewhere next year. Everyone knows he doesn't have to keep it a secret. Yeah. He's just to have fun and drive and it felt like he just had a fun weekend. No, it it was the Valtteri Bottas of. Okay, sorry. Let me preface it. We get at Valtteri a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I say we. We did a video. Eighty percent of it was you, Dad. But uh, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm there chirping away. I can't I can't deny it. But again, it's not so much a place of love, but. You know, with Valtteri, he Valtteri put himself up as Lewis's challenger. So when you put yourself up as Lewis's challenger, you get judged by the standards that you yourself are saying that you're competing with. So when you fall short of that, where and you're effing up Lewis's team in terms yeah. of like not helping out in that regard, we're gonna get at you. But to be honest, I would say since uh, I can't remember what race, but I'd say three or four races before, maybe even Silverstone, but three or four races before we went for the summer break, he's actually been doing quite, he was doing quite well, you know, quite consistent podiums. Um, and I think, yeah, getting pole position, um, or oh, speed king, whatever that is. <laughs> um, and and then um, and then the race back from the, from the back, you know, that was the thing that we accused Valtteri of is not being able to overtake and he he was scything through the grid so i'm happy for him i I was, I was really happy for him you know what i'm happy he's gone cuz i feel like i said it you know toxic relationship with toto that he had it had to end like yeah you know, it was it like i just feel like he was never going to get a multi year contract you see george russell got the 3 year contract valtteri was never going to get that uh, and you know, Alfred, he knows now for the next three years he's got a drive in Formula One, and that must be great for him. So yeah. I'm happy for him. He hit the belly, you know, um, and uh, it's been cool seeing him respond to Lewis on Twitter. You know, he said, "Thank God, you know, most important thing is you're okay." And I've never seen that before with like Valtteri and Lewis, and it's just it's been nice. But uh, Tandy. Yeah, and any, any going, nice words for Bryce? Yeah, going off what you've just said about the toxic relationship, I think um, at the moment he's just driving. You know, like when you break up with your ex and then they start like uploading pictures, like, oh, look how much fun I'm having now that I'm <laughs> away from you. Do you know what I mean? That's what he's doing. He's yeah. just trying to prove to us, like, oh, like, look, yeah, I can, doing... I too can do stuff. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. Touche. He's wearing less and going out more. Yeah, he's wearing less and going out more. Also, that AMG they gave him is insane. That that car is beautiful. So crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Do it? This is what we're saying is toxic because Toto is just like, hey, look, baby, I'm sorry, but look, here's the <laughs> <his> car. <laughs> here's a party gift. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. No, that car I got is crazy. two new cars, a Mercedes and an Alfa Romeo. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, <laughs> <Go in>. yeah. <laughs> That's a different type of, do you know That's why Susie Wolf isn't stressed at all. She looks mm-hmm. happy all the time, bro. Um, <laughs> and I don't blame her. Um, okay, so, God, I'm going to, this is, uh, let me do a quick one. Um, uh, my uh, star of the day, 
Uh, you've both taken the two people that I was going to say. So I'm going to go. I'm looking at the results. George Russell came ninth. Well done. Lance Stroll, seventh. Good result for Lance. And he, and you know what? He bullied Vettel as well. Um, a couple of people stuck it on Vettel. But you know what? People started to say that I've got a Vettel agenda. So let me not. But <laughs> he does, though. So I just, I just think he is. Now Kimmy's gone. He's the next one that needs to go. Are you sure? I'm just saying. Huh? Are you sure? Fair. What? That Vettel needs to go? Now that Kimmy's gone, he's the next one that needs to go. In terms of like old people that need to retire, yeah. Are you sure? What? More more than Alonso. Alonso is doing well. But you, you just don't think Alonso needs to go now. You no, know why he's doing well. I would, I would but, choose Alonso over yeah. Vettel simply just for the sole reason that when he was blocking Lewis, passing him, he said he was doing it for Max. Yeah, no, that was oh, crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. Oh, like, yeah. They, they, they both have the contract. same, yeah. You're protecting Max's championship hopes? Like, fuck off, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Had, he's always had an agenda against Lewis, mm-hmm. though. He's been back in the like, So it's... it's like, they, okay. Yeah. Uncle Vettel could stay. Alonso and his racist fans, they can go <laughs> and then enjoy. They will, they will get Vettel up. Um, At let's least get cleaned up after the race, man. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, um, at least he cleaned up. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that, you know, that's, he's doing good things. We shouldn't, let me not believe it. Mm. Big up. <laughs> um, donkeys. 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 Uh, Trayvon, um, who's your donkey today? I would say it's a toss-up between the the people in, in Lewis's pit stop and uh, and maybe Mazepin. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I mean, I want to you know- say. I want to say, like, Max is the obvious one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Max is so obvious, so I'm, like, looking I'm looking elsewhere because he definitely, like, he donkeyed the shit out of the, out of the race. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, fine. I'm going to, I want to, I want to change my vote to Max. I can't give it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It's, That's it's fine. After, That's after, absolutely fine. After further review, I can't, I can't give it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. Look, uh, yeah, he's yeah. he is who he is. Um, he's never going to change. The more that he gets coddled in the media and at his team, he's got no reason to believe. There's no one. There's no one in his life that says Max, cut the shit. Yeah. No one. That's cut it. Like sometimes shit. you get told off at home, but his dad's back in it. So his dad's back. You know what? Yeah. His dad's backing it because his dad's living through him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because his dad went on piss back in the day. <laughs> so so now he's living through his son. And yeah. it's like... I, I mean, so he's he's liking pictures of Lewis being ridiculed by people. Yeah. We've got all of... He's giving lifts to half of Sky F1 on his plane. So they're all <laughs> sucking on the cheek. And then, and then you've got his own it. team principal who just he's like doing carpool. You know, they're doing they're doing carpool. And, uh, I, just, I mean, they literally called him the Great White Hope. Once they did that, you were like, we know what this is. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Look, we said it. It does. The thing is that the people who like Max, it's not even that they like Max; is that he's the one against Lewis. Mm. That's all it is. And so, yeah. people, if it was Leclerc. It'd be everyone be on a clear thing. If it was yeah. when it, next season, we're gonna see. It's already happened with, with Russell. We saw it when it got announced. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. Have we have we prodded since it got announced? That Lewis. Oh yeah, we did last week. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. It's just um, for me. I just the, the whole thing around Max is so toxic and. Like everything, it starts from the top, and he is the top, and it just goes down from there. Yeah. So, yeah, Max definitely one of the donkeys. Tandy, um, any advance? Any um, advance who was my donkey? Oh man, what's the excuse this week, Yuki? What is the <laughs> excuse this week? 
Oh, Yuki. <laughs> eh? Um, Yuki, 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 Yuki. Uh, Bro, they're looking at you like, why did we give this guy another contract? I'll tell you what, it's, the, 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 it's the Honda take. The Honda are like, bro, if you want help on this new engine, right. you, you, you better, better keep, keep this guy. You know, you know in them films where someone hires like someone's son mm. and they're just they're rubbish. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't find it. Right? It's just, one he's, of my favorite moments of the weekend was during uh, when he got his track time deleted and his ra- his shout over the radio was so hilarious. <laughs> got so mad and then at the end in the uh in an interview he was like yeah i messed up it was <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault yeah i, I fucked up with my fault uh, oh, like we all know the me. rules like me. this fucking guy i like i i feel bad for him because he's the thing is with yuki he's going through the same thing that gasly went through at red bull mm-hmm. it, and, you know and we know they've moved him to italy They've got him on a training plan. Uh, you know, Franz Tost said that he's not a normal Japanese person, you know, whatever that yeah, means. Mark. That's what he said. He said uh, he's he, not a in normal a, Japanese. Marco, it might have been Helmut Marco, was like, oh, he's not a normal Japanese. Blah, 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 and, like, and it's just like, gee. They, that, and they, he, we know that Helmut bo- like, bollocks him after every time he does something yeah, wrong. Yeah, so, his house, there's cameras that go, yee, yee. Yeah, just, mm-hmm. Uh, it's like mm-hmm. Yuki. Are you are you studying? Are you studying? <laughs> they want it in his heartbeat. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> uh, I, I just feel I feel really bad for him. Uh, he's he's obviously you know, and Gasly's doing so well. So mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not a great time for him. But look, you know, this season's probably a write off for Yuki. Um, just try and do as well as you can, and then next season, you know, go again. But mm. uh, Trayvon, any any thoughts on on, on Yuki and and just yeah? No, I, mean, seen... I think I think it's you're right. He needs to. Well, he's one. He's hilarious. Like he's just he provides <laughs> comedy in a way that like you just need some weekends. He's such a like uh, a fiery person. But one thing I do, I will give him credit for, which I think is a testament to how these journalists and these announcers don't get a cultural difference is the way in the way he communicates because they like to say, Oh, he's so like abrasive and he, he's so like rude to his, his engineers and things over the radio. And it's not, he's not being rude. He's communicating in a language he does. That's not his first language. Yeah. And he's, he's doing so, you know, with a level of, of passion and excitement that white people often interpret like from us as being like aggressive or rude or having some type of uh, like emotion behind it. And there's actually a really great, I don't know if you guys listen to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast, but there's a really great episode where he talks about um, Asian pilots and, and how a lot of the crashes from some of the Asian airliners were, were because of the communication difference in the way that Asian people communicate and American people communicate. Oh, wow. And so that was one of the things that I saw early on in, in his career that I was like, ah, I feel like no one's talking about why this is really happening in terms of how he communicates. And they're brushing it off as like him being rude and, and, and mean to people. Oh. But um, again, there's not enough people of color on these shows to make those adjustments. You see, that, like nobody, nobody's talking about this. This is a really good. That was a really good piece of information, guys. Yeah. Really, it's, that's it's like, really, I really liked that segment. Thank you for that, actually, because that is a lot to think about. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I, 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 he when he's when he drives well, he drives well. I'll give him that. Much. Yeah, like, he definitely has the ability. To, to become, you know, a driver who can stay in, in the Formula One, mm-hmm. uh, in Formula One for, for a long period of time. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, how quickly he can adjust to, to those developments and also how many people continue to be, you know, worse drivers than him to, to allow him yeah. to retain that seat. I mean, as long as, Maz- as long as Mazepin's around, he might have a shot to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> fucking guy um um uh, always interesting to see what was nice from this race weekend 
last week uh, in uh, wherever we were in the world. Italy. We were in Italy this week. Where was it last week? Um, that was our, our no, was that no. Our, no, it was it was something with a B. Belgium, uh, you know, uh, Belgium, free, right? Belgium. That was, was the rainy one. Hold it was on, spa. it was spa because it rained Thank out and yeah and right. Oh and, yeah, so was that last week? Yeah. No. Oh, my. oh no, it's a Dutch Grand Prix. Sorry. He was a Dutch. Yeah. Zandvoort. We were yeah. in Zandvoort. Oh, was it? Uh, God, I, mean, yeah. I told you that about that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fucking Dutch. Like, big up all the Dutch listeners. Um, it's just Max. And, and big up the non-racist ones. Uh, the rest of you. Are... But um, they broadcast Lewis Hamilton's radio all race because obviously he was unhappy with his tires and. So yeah. all they done was just broadcast hammer and hammer and hammer, and it was just like so annoying. And it, obviously that's because of the narrative they have of hammer and as a whiner or whatever. But this week they had a lot of different radios, and they played a lot of Max Verstappen radio. Uh, and Max Verstappen was shouting. Max Verstappen was swearing. Max Verstappen was doing all kinds of things. All the things that they say, throw at Yuki. With Max, it's like celebrated, but with Yuki, it's like a demolishment on his character. Yeah. And I just think, just going back to what you said, it's interesting the different ways uh, and the way that biases and the way that and they give him cute little nicknames like Mad Max. Yeah, the right. Dutch Lion. Mm. He's so bad. I, yeah, I maintain that Dutch Lion sounds like a really poor brand of rolling papers <laughs> like you know the ones that it like, it's got like a rastafarian lion on the yeah. side, right? but they're like they're cardboard shit. yeah yeah they're shit like Joey, they like, you would stick. never use them yeah. they're, like, they're next to the business but no one ever gets them um but uh but yeah i just i just it's interesting it's a shame for, for you can it's a shame for the industry that we have those disparities when talking about Lewis and talking about Yuki, then talking about the rest of the grid. But you know, um, it's good that we can point it out. Um, real quick, my donkey Mercedes. I said it last week, okay. And our guest Spanners love him. He was like, "Calm down, they're gonna sort it out this week." If that stop is one second quicker, then nothing happens. Lewis goes through, he wins the race on that strategy. These guys are messing up the strategy and they're expecting Lewis to bail them out every yeah. single time. And he can, and because he's having to bail them out, he's getting into situations that he shouldn't be in. Right. Even Bahrain, first race of the season, he's had to bail them out on the strategy and drive the wheels off those tyres for him to win. Uh, I can't even remember. Other race, France, they messed up the strategy. Pit stops, they've messed up. It's just like, it is enough now. Mercedes need to sort this out. Because what is going you know, on, man? Like, it seems, what is going on with it? Like, 2020 was such a different year. Like, it's, yeah. I mean, even the pit stops, I don't, like, are are they having pit stop practice? Like, are they, like, working I on these pit stops? Pay? Sure. Yeah, like, like, I mean, Toto totally, totally needs to look at it. it they need to, because it's like, I've said it so many times in the show, like Mercedes pit stops are going to cost us this championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we cool. cannot have this level of pit stops, honestly. So that's one donkey. Sergio Perez gets the other one for uh, cutting corners consistently trying whilst overtaking and not giving the place back yeah. straight away. And then, uh, do you know when, like, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of a situation where basically he thought he was going to get away with it. And then they were like, no, no, you're not. You can't just cut corners, bro. Right. <laughs> like, Joey. And like for Red Bull to not tell him to give it back and for him to think that he was going to pull off and make five second gap and stay on the podium. Like, right. it was just like, it was never going to happen. Um, so, yeah, my, and, it, and in fact, him staying in third held up Bottas and stopped him from coming forward and I think if if Bottas had a chance at the McLarens uh, I think he would have I think he would have won the race so it's also yeah Sergio Perez he did well but just he, he sometimes he does things where I'm like you're 
you're not thinking properly. Your composure is not all there. Um, but yeah, that's my donkey, basically. Um, don't know if you guys agree with that, but that's that's. Oh, yeah, it, it was strange that they didn't tell him to give it back immediately. I'm mean? just taking mental note of how Nyasha, between the last two pods, has slowly started an agenda against Sergio Perez, guys. You know what it is, yeah. It's slowly I'll tell you now, manifesting. Yeah. I don't think Sergio Perez... Know, let me... Mm. I don't think Sergio Perez... Okay, let's say Lewis's break magic doesn't happen in Baku. We right. take that race out, right. Okay. I don't think that he is doing a good enough job in that second Red Bull seat. Right. That if he wasn't Sergio, if he was a Red Bull junior driver, I don't think that he'd be getting the leeway that he's getting. Uh, right. uh, he's he's constantly well off max in qualifying. Uh, and, you know, he, he does these drives where he comes through the grid. I don't know if he had to take a penalty for for this race or if he just qualified low. Um, so you're but, saying if he wasn't family, we wouldn't be so open about his oxtail. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? He makes rubbing oxtail, but he's I, getting rid of it. I was like, uh, but now family. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. We're We're shielding him. Yeah. From the necessary criticism. Uh-huh. His potato salad has got raisins in it. Yeah. But not saying anything. He's putting raisins in it, but we're getting away with it because, yeah. you know, we like meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, yeah. Bontaz's food just gets criticized left and right. <laughs> yeah. You catch them. They're bringing the same shit to them. His, <laughs> to them. his food doesn't even get put on the main table. They just, they just keep mean, that in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Guys, right, God, this has been a great episode. But um, real quick, yeah, uh, the next race is in Russia uh, in two weeks' time. We've got a break. Um, um, uh, Trayvon, is there anything? What would you like to see in the next race? Is there anything that you'd like to see in particular? Max is probably going to take an engine penalty, so he's going to start at the back of the grid anyway, but he will have a fresh engine. Um, Is there anything that you'd kind of like to see in the next race or anything you're looking forward to? Um... I'm I'm looking forward to just like seeing Lewis back back on the top of the podium, man. I'm I'm ready for a race win because those are the only ways I think he's going to be able to really pull off the championship. Is you just got to throw some wins in there. I don't yeah. think he can make it the rest of the season, and unless Max has a really hard time on second places and P3s or, or like anything less, because you need those twenty five point twenty six point finishes to like actually like bring you home, and so. I'm hoping that, you know, after, especially after this weekend with Max starting in the back, that like it works out that Lewis can actually get a big, a big win this weekend. And, you know, I'm also, I'm also under, uh, kind of curious about how the, the three place grid penalty shouldn't be served separately from the, the engine grid penalty. Like that feels a little weird to me that, that you can do that, and then all of a sudden the three plays grip penalty doesn't matter any, anymore. Yeah, and yeah. it should actually affect your race. Like it shouldn't be, oh, I'm, you got three plays grip, but also I'm gonna take an engine penalty, so I'm gonna start at the back. So no big deal, guys, right? No, that should yeah. be a separate thing because you did a thing that requires you to suffer for it, and you needed to take that engine penalty at some point anyway. Yeah, so that that things that's a little weird to me. I wish that would change because it doesn't seem fair that you no. can just. Be like, I'll take a fresh engine from the back of the grid in the fastest car, and then that three place grip penalty for riding on someone's head no longer matters. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very tactical from Red Bull. Mm. Uh, we knew it was coming, the engine change, but you know, it's it's definitely going to come now. It, they'd be stupid not to, but um, it's definitely a loophole that I would like to see closed. Um, Tandy, uh, I think Russia. It's- I think it's going to be really weird to see a lot of Mazepin fans from Russia. Oh, yeah. snap. Yeah. Like, do you know how, like, Vettel had all his, his posse and his family them, his people's them, at the mm. at the grandstands? Are we going to see loads of Mazepin cheers and stands? Is that what we're going to see? Um, 
I, I guess so. I'm, I'm presuming he's pretty popular in Russia. And so. surely he won't embarrass us. He, he won't embarrass himself in his own hometown. So would he kind of put a bit of an effort in there? <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. Um, I don't know. That's why I'm just. I'm just wondering. I'm just thinking uh, about that. Well, oh, well, I hope he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that would be great. A nice little <laughs> spin. Last. All Maybe the spin will be extra special. I might get some like Russian colours out the engine. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what would I like to see? Yeah. Win 100, man. Win number 100. Mm-hmm. It's got to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. I think obviously if Max, let's say even if Max gets, you know, into the points, if, you know, I think Lewis is what, five points behind at the moment? Yeah. So he really, he, uh, he really needs to get at least like you know a 15, 15 point swing, ten point swing on this, so that obviously Lewis at some point is going to have to take an engine penalty as well. Um, and races are kind of running out in terms of which run that they would want that to come at. You don't want it to come too late. So, man, eight races. It's starting to get into. We're going to get into like squeaky bum time now. Um, sorry, Trevor. Now, I don't know if you've heard that phrase before. <laughs> I, just that? Like, oh, I don't think I've ever heard that. It, uh, so, British, uh, I don't know if you're into like football soccer uh, yeah. as much. Uh, so, Man United manager Alex Ferguson, he, I don't know, I can't remember the f- why, but basically, squeaky bum time was like the end of the season. So you you, you got to, everything is like, do you know what I mean? It's coming to a heads now. I, I'm going to get that, but that it's just, a, it's just a phrase as it's coming towards the end of the season, right. like pressure's on basically. Yeah. <laughs> they call it squeaky I'd bum like, time. Pull your finger <laughs> I mean, look, Lewis needs to squeak yeah. a lot of bum. <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah. that, do you know what I mean? Um, uh, but it's, yeah, it, I'm excited for the end of the season. I'm not excited for it, but I'm excited for like, for this season to kind of come to a conclusion and, and for us to see, but you know, there's so many twists and turns. Um, and obviously the race we've just had has shown that. If uh, You know, what's interesting. If, if Lewis took an engine penalty in the same race that Max took an engine penalty, who actually starts at the back of the grid? I think it'll be Max with the grid penalties. Um, with, yeah. uh, with the penalty from, from Italy. So, um, could be a good time to do it. Um, and just, <laughs> it could it could be an interesting strategy. <laughs> could be a good time to do it. It could be uh, in front of Max and we'll fight for the fight to the front. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the thing is, it's like, oh god, the way Max is, Max on you two at the front of the grid is bad enough, but Max at the back of the grid, <laughs> Mazepin. Right. With all these other people around there as well, I, I that is uh, that is hard. I'm trying to look at other Grand Prix. Turkish Grand Prix, they could take it. United States is quite easy to uh, overtake Brazil. So there's still a few races where they could take it. But yeah, only eight races to go, man. Um, what a season we are having, and what a guest you have been, Trayvon. Like honestly, that was incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so what did you say just then oh, I said that this has been so much fun man I'm, I'm glad you guys you know, Aww, we, we do love this with to you. have you on no, we love to have you on and look next season you're welcome back on as well we can we can make it an annual thing like yeah. you know yeah. That's every season baby let me know yeah no 100% and hopefully we'll have the technicals working before we start. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that will be all good. Um, I guess let people know where can people find you and 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 where can people kind of see your work. Um, I mean, I'm easy to find on yeah. Instagram, Twitter, just at Trayvon on either one of those T R A V O N, and that's where you get all the updates on everything I'm doing, everything that's nice. happening. It's such a cool username as well. You must did you get that early? No, man. I the inst- the Twitter one I stole from someone who. Uh, like had it and just was sitting on it and wasn't using it. Oh, really? And I had someone at Twitter give it to me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> nice. wow. Uh, 
the Instagram one I bought from a guy who had it. Oh, <laughs> nice. You got to look. I was like, oh, like, wow, Trey. This guy got Trey running his name. No, Trey, but Trey. I've been trying to bully the app. No, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a fault for him. <laughs> yeah, no. I send tweets to her every like month, like, time's up. Come on. Is she active? No, that's what pisses me off. Bro, even I wanted my surname, like Sakutuqua. Uh-huh. And it's one of my cousins in South Africa. I don't even think <laughs> they knew. I know. That's what mine is. Mine's like some random chick from Joburg. And she's got oh, Tandy. Can, can, can you hear like, Tandy? Oh. I can't hear her. Huh? Wait, can you hear Tandy? I can't see or hear her. Uh, gone? Oh, I, I can see or hear her. You know what? The technicals are doing us over. I want to. I want to cut this before I do any guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, make sure you follow us uh, on YouTube. Make sure or subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. All of that good stuff. We'll be back for the Russian Russian, Russian. Russian. Grand Prix. Hopefully, someone sprays Putin with champagne. Uh, hopefully, we get. I feel like I've been saying this for weeks now. Lewis 100. Hopefully uh, we get this. We're waiting since Silverstone. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being, coming on the show, Trayvon. And we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Goodbye. Bye.